Ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin when we have a quorum. We are one person away from a quorum, and we're expecting two more people, so. And Lou Wardlaw, can I see you for a minute? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October 14th meeting of the Memphis and Shelby County Land Use Control Board. My name is Mary Sharp, and I will be serving as your chairperson today. We will begin this morning's meeting with a roll call. Mr. Whitehead, would you proceed, please? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Fleming. Here. Dr. Pritchard. Here. Mr. Tolls. Here. Vice Chair Lyles Wallace. Here. Ms. O'Connell. Here. Ms. Wilbanks. Here. And Chair Sharp. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Whitehead. I would like to remind you the copies of today's agenda are located at the back of the room or at the front of the room if you need them. If you wish to be a speaker on any case that is on today's agenda, please fill out an attendant speaker's card. Once you have filled out the card, please bring it up front and hand it to one of our OPD staff members located in the front of the chamber below the podium and desk. When that agenda item is called, you will be given an opportunity to speak. At this point, I would like to read our conflict of interest statement. The adopted policy of the Land Use Control Board requires that any member of the board recuse himself or herself from any participation in the discussion or voting of any manner on the meeting's agenda in which he or she may have direct or indirect personal interest. The member shall vacate his seat or her seat during deliberation on any matter from which they have recused themselves. An abstention may substitute for recusal for the purposes of maintaining a quorum. I would now like to get approval for our minutes from our September meeting. I so may move. I please have a motion? I so move, Madam Chair. Okay, it has been moved and second. Okay, do I have any discussion? Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I assume we're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Whitehead, may I please get a secretary's report for this month and an explanation of today's procedures? Mr. Whitehead. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the extent of the secretary's report is just that this uh, body will not be meeting Thursday, the second Thursday of November. It'll be meeting the second Wednesday of November. That's Wednesday, November 10th, because this building will be closed for Veterans Day on November 11th. Um, now, with the procedures, uh, at the beginning of today's meeting, we will establish a consent calendar for those items where no one in the audience or the board is requesting an individual public hearing. Ms. Wilbanks will announce those cases to be placed on the consent calendar in a moment. And if you have not filled out a card, uh, but would like to object if you're an applicant to one of the conditions of approval or if you're in opposition, just raise your hand and we will skip over that. Uh, once the consent calendar is established and approved, we'll move on to the regular agenda. For each case on the regular agenda, staff will give a presentation followed by the applicant's presentation and any testimony in support of the application. The applicant and supporters are given a 10-minute period to speak. Following that, uh, the board will hear from opposition. The opposition will be given 10 minutes to speak. Following that, we'll go back to the applicant for a three-minute rebuttal period. While each uh, speaker is at the podium, uh, Madam Chair will ask any board member if they have questions of that speaker before they leave the podium. But then at the end of each of those tranches of time, 10, 10, and three, uh, Madam Chair will also ask if there are any final questions uh, for the people who are speaking. 
And that Q&A time is not counted against those periods of time. Following all the presentations and following all the testimony, the chair will then uh, close the public hearing and the body will uh, deliberate on the matter. If the body would like to reopen the public hearing, uh, it may do so with a two-thirds vote. And at that point, Madam Chair will ensure that both parties, both sides of the situation are heard for an equal amount of time. Um, Again, if any member of the audience wishes to provide testimony in support or in opposition to a case, there are speaker's cards at the front podium. Madam Chair, I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, if any member of the audience wishes to provide any testimony in support or in opposition of a case, he or she will need to fill out a speaker's card. These are available. Speakers Speaker's cards are not required of applicants since their names are already on the record. The board is a supporter of community involvement and we welcome neighborhood comments and feedback. We are respectful of the fact that many of you have taken off work or adjusted your schedules to be here today, but we ask that your comments be made within the time frame allowed, please. If there are multiple speakers, Please try not to be repetitive so as to make the most of your side's 10-minute time limitation. Lastly, I'd like to ask you to all silence your cell phones so as not to interrupt or disturb anyone during today's proceedings. We will now move to the consent agenda. With our procedures now explained, I would like to introduce to my right, Ms. Lisa Wilbanks, who will be this morning's consent agenda chairperson. Ms. Wilbanks will read 1 through 17 as the consent agenda. Once the consent agenda is read, if you wish to discuss one of these items individually, please come forward and give us the item number and we will pull that case. We will then vote on the remaining consent agenda items as one vote and following the vote, we will hear the cases that were pulled individually. Ms. Wilbanks, would you proceed, please? Um, yes, Madam Secretary, I'm gonna let Mr. Whitehead tell me what the consent agenda is at this moment. Okay, thank you. Yes, Ms. Wilbanks, uh, we have cards on items one, three, and 13. Uh, so one, three, and 13 will be heard. Now three and 13, our cards are in support. So Madam Chair, on three and 13, we probably can just go straight to the, we can probably skip a staff presentation and just go straight to the speakers. Uh, so 1, 3, and 13, we have cards, and one more caveat, Ms. Wilbanks, numbers 4, 11, 14, and 17 are holds for 30 days. Okay, we've changed 14 from a rejection to a hold. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right, item number two, case SUP 21-18 in Cherokee. The request is a group daycare home at 3374 Sturgeon Avenue. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number four, case MJR 21-34 in River Oaks. The request is a modification to the building setback at 6456 Winfrey Place from 10 to five feet. Staff recommendation is hold for one month. Item number five, case MJR 21-35 in Cordova. The request is a modification to conditions regarding permitted land uses to allow 44 lot residential development at the northeast corner of Trinity and North Erickson. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number six, case MJR 21-36 in Parkway Village. The request is a modification to conditions regarding curb cuts for a gas station at the northeast corner of Perkins and Knight Arnold. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number seven, case MJR 21-37 in Frazier. The request is a modification to conditions regarding permitted land uses to allow a library at 2220 James and plan development boundary expansion. Mansion. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number eight, case MJR 21-38 in Cordova. The request is a 28 lot residential development on the south side of Dexter, west of Chickering. Staff recommendation is approval with one condition. Item number nine, case MJR 21-39 in Cordova. The request is a major modification to allow the sale of used goods at 8160 Macon. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number 10, case SAC 21-9 in the medical district. The request is a physical closure of an unnamed alley between North Cleveland, Court, North Claybrook, and Jefferson. Staff 
recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number 11, case SAC 21-10 in South Memphis. The request is the closure of the alley on the west side of Mississippi Boulevard, north of Walker. Staff recommendation is hold for one month. Item number 12, case PD 21-31 in Westwood. The request is a planned development to allow the construction of 62 new single family, unit, single family attached units of two family homes and townhouses at 3794 Horn Lake Road. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Item number 14, case PD 21-34 in Raleigh adjacent. The request is a gas station at the northwest corner of Singleton Parkway in Egypt Central. Stack recommendation is hold for one month. Item number 15, case SUP 21-24 on Jackson Avenue. The request is a special use permit to allow a social service institution to allow a program of supportive services for military veterans at 3114 Jackson Avenue. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. And item number 16, case SUP 21-25 in South Memphis. The request is a special use permit to allow a social service institution to allow a neighborhood resource and coordination center for military veterans at 575 Phelan Avenue. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. And item number 17, KZ21-13 in the Millington Reserve. The request is rezoning of four acres from CA District to R6 District on the west side of Sledge, south of South Knoll. Staff recommendation is hold for one month. That is our consent agenda. Thank you. We have pulled item numbers one, three, and 13, which are going to be heard. The items on the consent agenda will now be voted on with one vote subject to the recommendation of the OPD. If the consent agenda is approved, only items number one, three, and 13 will have full independent public hearings. By voting on the consent agenda, each board member is affirming that he or she has read the staff report and agrees with its findings and where applicable, it's, recommend, it's recommended conditions. Can I get a motion, please, for the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Move to approve item number two, case SUP 21-18. Item number four, case MJR 21-34 as a hold. Item number five, case MJR 21-35. Item number six, case MJR 21-36. Item number seven, case MJR 21-37. Item number eight, case MJR 21-38. Item number nine, case MJR 21-39. Item number 10, case SAC 21-9. Item number 11, case SAC 21-10 as a hold. Item number 12, case PD 21-31. Item number 14, case PD 21-34 as a hold. Item number 15, case SUP 21-24. Item number 16, case SUP 21-25. And item number 17, case Z 21-13 as a hold. Second. Thank you, Ms. Wilbanks, and I hear a second. Is there any discussion amongst our board members? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I assume we're all ready to vote. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Now we will go on to the regular agenda. Dr. Pritchard. Agenda item number one, MJR 21-24, correspondence to PD07-342CO, Southeast Shelby County, outline plan modifications to Forest Creek plan development at the northeast corner of Forest Hill Irene and Shelby Drive to allow a 103 lot gated residential development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Thank you, Dr. Pritchard. Okay, is the applicant present? Is the applicant present? Would you please give your information? Cindy Reeves, that's all consulting 5999 Shelby Oaks Drive, Suite 200. Um, I do want to introduce my clients. I've got John and Joel Porter and John Galini here, and they're the partners in this development. Um, last month, you all know that you asked us to go back and meet with the neighbors, and we did do that. We're very excited about our plan. We feel that it is a good plan, and we gave them covenants, we gave them elevations, we gave them examples of homes, and I'll get that in my presentation, but I'd like to save most of my time for rebuttal, and okay. that is when I'll give my presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. We're gonna hear the case first. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Seth Thomas, Office of Planning and Development. So the case before us, as stated previously, is uh, MJR 2124, a um, 
major modification to the northeast corner of Shelby Drive and Forest Hill Irene, part of the Forest Creek Plan Development Area 1 West. Um, so the location, just um, an unincorporated Shelby County. Oh. Is it not? Is it screen right there. Uh -huh. Oh, is it us now? It did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. So as, 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 a, um, as I was saying, um, this is right on the border of Collierville, located within unincorporated Shelby County. Uh, here's an aerial of the site uh, along Forest Hill Irene is a, a, a senior living facility, uh, as well as some apartments. And then along Shelby Drive is a collection of some commercial uses and um, vacant conservation agriculture land. Um, some site photos. So here's the original site plan that was um, brought before, I believe, in June. It's been quite some time. Um, and, and through uh, working with uh, the applicant, we, we came up with a new rework site plan, um, trying to take away the prevalence of front-facing garages and making them rear, uh, rear alley entrances. Um, and it's 103 units. And here's the new elevations that um, have been brought up uh, of the single story, the, the narrow two story, and then the two different types of townhomes. And here's the front yard landscaping that is part of the uh, major modification request as a change to some of the landscaping requirements that were in the initial outline plan of the plan development. And so in conclusion, uh, the applicant is requesting a site plan approval for 103 lot gated residential subdivision with two private access, private access points off of Irene Woods Lane. Um, as stated previously, they're also requesting uh, a change to the landscape requirements and this residential development with a mix of single family and townhomes along with the community pool is a use that is allowed by right for the outline plan conditions. Um, and uh, staff believes that the, this proposed development will not unduly injure or damage the use, value, and enjoyment of surrounding properties nor hinder any other further development in the area and that the location of the structures, parking areas, walks, lighting, and other service uh, facilities are compatible with the surrounding land uses. Um, so our recommendation is um, approval with revisions to the outline plan conditions, more specifically um, an RV2 modified landscape plate along Forest Hill Irene and Shelby Drive in lieu of an A3 landscape plate, and then a 15 foot wide uh, landscape plate B3 on the northern property line that borders the um, elderly care facility. And then we are also requesting a minimum of one tree per lot frontage on both the streets and alleys of the residential properties proposed as part of this development. And here's a, just an example of the um, draft covenant document. I'm sure um, Cindy will talk about it further. And here's just some examples of the homes that were built in a previous, uh, in, a, in a very similar subdivision requested by the development. But that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Do we have any questions of the staff right now, Mr. Thomas? I do. Okay. Could you explain the difference between the landscape? Um, I, whatever, yeah, so, so, however you refer to them, I, I don't understand the difference. Yeah, so, so effectively here, um, the original landscape plating was wouldn't have um, fencing, and and and, the, and or the fencing that would be there was not um, see through. It was going to be six foot wood panel, and so this replaces it with a uh, see through wrought iron fencing along the street frontages, as opposed to just a wall, essentially. Does that answer your question? Okay. All right, we're ready for the applicant to make her presentation. I'm gonna save my time for rebuttal, please. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to call the names to come up instead of waiting on someone to, oh, okay. Okay, we're ready for the uh, opposition, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Irene Neighborhood Association, Brenda Solomito Baser, Solomito Land Planning, 1779 Kirby Parkway, Memphis. And I'd like to ask all of those who are opposed to this application to please stand. Thank 
you. So you can see we have a number of neighbors who are, who are gravely concerned about the application. I also have a petition that I'd like to hand in that has 118 signatures from the neighbors who some could be here, some could not be here. Um, Mr. Uh, William B. Dunavant III, Bill III, who is also uh, part of the opposition, could not be here today, as you may know, um, the death of, recent death of his father, he has um, taken, taken some time. So I also want to hand out um, a brief analysis. Thank you. And we did. We're very grateful and appreciative for, for Cindy Reeves and her clients for taking the opportunity to meet with us. Um, they have provided us with uh, a lot of information and also um, some of the details that, that we did request. So what you have before you now is just a brief analysis of the original application and the revised plan as we discussed with the um, developer on the 23rd of September was our last meeting date. And in the beginning, we had um, 105 total lots. There were 12 attached single family lots and 93 single family lots. The typical lot size for the single family was around 4,000 square feet. Typical triplex lot had three units, a little over 3,000 square feet. But the landscape buffer was a single common open space lot that surrounded the perimeter of the property. It was exclusive of the residential lots, which meant that it would be owned and maintained by the association. If you take a look at the next page, the current plan that's before you today, you'll see there are 100 lots. There was a reduction of five lots. And we were, under, we were told that the developer cannot go below 100 lots or the deal won't work. That's understandable. I understand it's an expensive piece of property at a very high profile location. But my clients don't understand how that can be their problem. There are 39 attached single family, 61 single family lots, detached single family lots. So significant increase in the attached single family and a reduction of the detached single family, which my clients are stating that's not in character or in keeping with this neighborhood. The single family residential to the east is larger lot, perhaps 7,000 to 14,000 square foot lots. In order to be compatible, we would think that it would be something more in keeping with what is out there. And I think the UDC demands compatibility and keeping in character with the community. And I don't think that you can actually compare any subdivisions west of Forest Hill Irene. You have the micro soccer complex, which is a gem. 750,000 visitors annually. You don't want a very unattractive, unsustainable residential development being at the gate of that gem of Shelby County. The typical lot size now for the single family was increased to a little about 4,500 square feet, slightly increased. The typical triplex lot is around 3,000 square feet. The 12 foot landscaper buffer is now a part of every lot. So individual lot owners, it will be part of their lot. And I think the original submittal was going to be an age restricted, 55 and older. It is no longer going to be as open market. And I believe you have a letter from Shelby County Schools stating that this development will have an impact on two of the nearby schools. I'm not sure what the impact is, but I'm assuming it would not be a positive impact. So on the last page, you'll have the summary of the, the changes to the plan that's before you here today. This is just part of the reason why we have so many neighbors in opposition. We just don't think that the numbers are working either. The lot sizes, the, the amount of heated square footage, 
based upon the dollar value per square foot in this market are not making sense. We were told there would start be around 350,000 and with construction costs and things the way they are, we, from a market standpoint, we don't exactly see how that is possible. But I will um, allow the neighbors to speak to tell their personal stories. I also have a letter from one of our neighbors that I will also submit. And this one is, is from Ms. Sherry Blackburn. It's a nice letter of opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have about four minutes left, so we have six speakers, so you have about 30 seconds per speaker. I'd like to call first Barbara Dandridge in opposition. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbara Dandridge, and I live in the Forest Shadow subdivision. I am president of our homeowners association. First of all, I would like to thank you all for allowing me to come today and speak in support of our beautiful community. Um, I live at 9165 North Forest Island Drive. I've been a resident there for about 20 years, and I live there with my husband, Stanley, and our son, Trooper, who is a boxer pup. And we love the community, we love it. And we're in opposition of this new development. And the reason being is because we don't feel as though the development that will be in keeping with the surrounding, with the uh, homes that's in the surrounding community. We live in a subdivision um, whose square footage runs somewhere around 350 to 10,000 square feet. And we have a lot of uh, land where we can have our grandchildren and our babies, uh, fur babies play, and we can enjoy, we can walk. We just have a lovely community, and we want to keep it as such. We're not in opposition of the uh, land being developed. We just want a development that will be a community filled with love, and it will be that way, remain that way for years to come. And lastly, I want to say this. I want, I'm an educator, and I believe in children. And I want to see children run, play, be happy uh, for years to come in a community and not live somewhere where they're congested and, and crowded, where they don't have uh, space to run and play and develop completely. So I want to just say, I want to speak to your heart and just say, if would you like, or like for your grandbabies to live in that community? I would not. I want my grandbabies to run and live in a community where they will be free and develop as children and to be productive, to be proud of where they're living and to live there for years where they can have their babies to grow up and live there. And one more thing, success, success is measured by love and not money, but love. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Ms. Dandridge. You're welcome. Okay, we now have Blackburn. Blackburn. Ms. Blackburn, you got about 15 seconds for the rest of these people to be able to speak. Good morning, Madam Chair and distinguished board members. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak. My name is Sherry Blackburn, and I'm a homeowner at 4770 Forest Bridge Drive in the Forest Shadows community, um, a neighbor to Barbara Dandridge, who just spoke. Um, I, I live in the beloved Forest Shadows community for over 17 years, almost two decades. Um, I'm here uh, before you as a very concerned resident and citizen of Shelby County to express my opposition of the planned development as currently proposed. Um, the lot density uh, and development of seven homes per acre is um, a, a lot smaller than originally planned and what our in keeping with our community. Um, as the proposed development, um, I, I believe there would be challenges. Um, at, um, it would create perhaps a great deal of unfavorable challenges, present and future, such as increased traffic congestion, potential for high property turnover, with potential to become a transient rental community as a result of the small homes, and perhaps a lax, poorly written HOA covenants, which could be easily uh, dissolved. I believe the current designs as proposed would greatly devalue our uh, beautiful community and would not offer sustained growth and long-term value for our community. 
Um, I would like to say that I'm not opposed to growth within my community, but um, I, I would, as Barbara stated, I, I would really like that more love and consideration um, and alignment with our community be placed in this development. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Blackburn. We now have Teresa, and I can't pronounce your last name. About 15 seconds. Yes, thank you so much for having me. This, um, we own the property at 4926 Forest Hill Irene Road. And I just wanted to say, we met with a developer on this. We've been opposed to it from the beginning. It's not in character and keeping with our community. I asked the developer if he felt like this proposal was in keeping with the existing community. He said he felt it was in keeping with the existing PD. I said, do you feel like it's in keeping with the surrounding community that's existing? The lakes of Forest Hill, Four Shadows, Barclay Estates, and Collierville Station. He said no. He understands our position as well. It's not in keeping with our community or the character, and we want a place that everybody can call home. Most of the neighbors have been there 15 to 20 years. And thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Now the time is up. And would it be for the board members to make the decision? Do we want to hear the rest of the three people? Or the time is up? OK, one board member would like to hear. OK, if you can keep it really 15 seconds, we'll hear the other three. Mr. Mack, I can't pronounce your last name either. Mark, Mark Grace, Mark is not here, okay. Good morning, my name is Mark George. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Distinguished Board for allowing me to speak. I'll try to keep it very brief. Um, just uh, uh, a month ago, this Distinguished Board asked us to go back and meet with the developer and the community. We did host that meeting, and uh, uh, and we expressed that uh, we wanted more green space, we wanted less density, and uh, we wanted the uh, development to be more compatible to our our community. And uh, so the developer was there, uh, John Porter, and he emphatically told us that uh, he made all of those decisions. He was not going to make one change. Um, and uh, so it was a total waste of our time to go and meet, to bring our neighbors together and sit down and meet with this developer. And he said he was not going to change anything. So I asked this board to deny this plan, uh, this request to modify this property. And, uh, and, and, I, and I just want you to, to know that uh, there was a total disregard for our community. And they heard nothing that we had to say and said that they would make no changes and that they had full control and would make all the decisions. Very disappointing meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Now we have a Jerry Cult something. Can't pronounce your last name either. Jerry? Jerry Cottawar. OK, 15 seconds. We're doing this because we have so many neighbors, and we know you took off work, but please, 15 Jerry seconds. Jerry Cattawar and Millie Cattawar. OK. And we live at, and thank you for having us up. We appreciate it very much. Uh, we live at 8121 East Holmes Road, and we're here in opposition. Very simply because we, don't, we think the density is much, much too dense for the area, and we don't feel like it's compatible. And I think when you stop and think compatible, these are the people that live there, and they're all here saying it doesn't seem compatible to them, and they live there. So we're here in opposition. We really would, would hope you deny this petition, and thank you very much. Thank you. One more. Ms. Jennifer. <clears throat> Give us your address, too. Good morning. My name is, <clears throat> excuse me, Jennifer Lahan. I live at 5010 Forest Hill Irene Road. Our family has been out there for over 60 years. We've been there since 1958. We have 50 acres there. Our neighbor has 40 acres. Most of the neighbors around us have a minimum of two acres. Um, we are opposed to this uh, 
development because of the density. I'm not going to say what others have said, but what I do want to say is the letter that was in the staff report from Shelby County Schools. It was from the Office of Facilities Planning and Property Management. They said that based on Shelby County Schools current attendance, zone students living on the subject property would attend the following schools, Southwind, Germantown Middle, uh, Germantown High School. They said that two of these schools are currently operating near or above capacity. Germantown Middle, 98%. Germantown High School, 104%. With 105 additional homes, this amendment is expected to have an impact on our two, our two schools operating near, uh, near above capacity. How can we handle that? Shelby County Schools cannot handle this. How can our neighborhood handle this? Just wanted to point that out to you and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Okay, we are ready for the rebuttal from the from the uh, applicant. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, how many of the neighbors live south of Shelby Drive? How many of the neighbors live south of Shelby Drive? Okay, um, the original application that we filed was designed for all front loads and a reverse frontage landscape plate, which meant that along Shelby Drive and Forest Hill Road, you would have a fence along those roads instead of the front of a home and a wrought iron fence with landscaping. And we felt that the major changes that we made were, you know, we felt like we made major changes after meeting with them on July 19th. And we, we were very excited about the new plan by having all, all rear loads and not having front loads. We felt that we took a lot of their advice into consideration on our new plan, and we liked the new plan that we've got. Um, the property's been for sale for 20 years, and this is the first site plan review that this board has ever seen. There have been other people that have looked at it. This, uh, my clients did not ever look at this for an age restricted community. That was a previous developer or a previous uh, contract that was on the property that never ever went forward. Um, they also requested the draft of the covenants, which we, we did give, and I'll go into my presentation now, please. Hold on here, I'm gonna have to email it to myself here. Do you need my flash drive? Yeah, I'll take your flash drive too if you okay. got it. Can we pause the time? <coughs> This exhibit is to show you the Forest Creek plan development. This is all the area in the density that is in the, in the plan development. You have the senior apartments that are directly above us that are 15.2 units per acre. You have the apartments that were approved in January of this year that have 19.5 units per acre. You have the Irene Woods apartments that are 10.9 acres, and they're on both sides of, of, um, of that development. You have vacant land that's in brown, and on two, two other parcels, you have our parcel that has the star, and then you have more apartments that are 11.1 .1 density, and then the blue is commercial. So you can see the majority of this plan development is density. It's mostly apartments. You do have the single family 
that is 6,200 square foot lots that is immediately south of the Irene Woods apartments. And then you have land that was annexed, all that land has been annexed into uh, Collierville. Uh, next slide. But that just shows you the density and you can't have the density south of this development. So this is the sewer entitlement map and you can see that the Forest Creek plan development and the, the four vacant parcels that are still vacant, those are the only parcels that are allowed for any kind of density. So we could, we could do more apartments here, but we just didn't feel that more apartments were good for this site. We felt that it was a good transition to go from the single family to the mixed use to the senior, to the apartments. And um, you also have sewer, sewer entitlements to the west um, on another piece of property. So next slide. But as you could have seen, there's no sewer entitlement south of, south of our site. So those will not have any density. Uh, that is the overall plan development. That is 431 acres and that was approved 20 years ago, and that's whenever they decided what the uses would be for this site. We're in here for site plan review only. We're not asking for zoning entitlements. And the only change to the PD conditions that we, that we feel we cannot meet is having a six-foot wooden fence in front of a home, because we, we don't have reverse frontage lots. We have front-facing um, homes. Next slide. So we are doing cottage and townhouses, and those uses are permitted in the CMU2 district, as you can see by the use chart. This is an example of what a cottage lot is, and um, it is a one or one and a half story house containing one principal dwelling unit located on a single track or lot with private yards on all four sides. A cottage takes vehicle access from the rear of the track or lot. The next slide is the single family attached townhouses and I know that everyone knows what those are. We're having three units per, per, per unit and um, instead of having eight. So the next slide. This just shows the bulk regulations for the cottage. We could have gone down to 2,500 square foot lots for cottages and 1,000 square foot lots for townhouses. We chose not to do that. We did not think that that was good. We did, next slide, we did do a plan that did show that density that we could get by using all townhouses and it, got, it would have given us 334 lots. We didn't think that that was good for the community and we just didn't think that that was a good plan even though it is a permitted use. Next slide. You all have seen the, the uh, original plan that had all front loads. It just, it, it really, once we got to looking at it, we realized that it did need some major changes. And we appreciate them meeting with us and bringing those changes to our attention back in July. Next slide. This is our new plan. It is a gated community. It has a pool, a clubhouse. It's all rear loads. It's not reverse front edge along Shelby Drive and Forest Hill, and we feel that it is a very good plan. Next slide. You've seen our elevations that will be along Forest Hill and Shelby Drive. Next slide. That's just some um, architect renderings of what some of the homes will be. That's the townhouses, and there's another townhouse. And then you've got some elevations of homes that have been built that are designed by the same architect. They're in Collierville, and they start at $500,000. Um, but that just gives you an idea of what we are looking, the product that we're looking at. Keep going. Well, I mean, you can let them look at it. The next slide, and I apologize, um, is a site plan that just shows how the, the, the house can fit on the lot and there's a 20-foot driveway in the back that you have two cars in the garage, you have two cars behind the, behind the garage for your visitors, and then I think we have 26 or 25 visitor, additional visitor parking spaces, so we don't think that there's gonna be a problem with guest parking. 
Um, and then the next slide is the draft of our covenants. I mean, we, we are going to be maintaining all of the yards, so it will all be uniform, just like an apartment complex, but you don't have an apartment complex, you actually have ownership, and you have a proud ownership for this development. We feel that that is better than having apartments there or commercial there. We just, we're very excited about our plan, and we would hope that the board would support the plan, and we are here if you have any questions. That's fine. That's done. We're done. If you want to go back to the first slide, you can. Does anybody have any questions? Are you, is that your presentation? I know, I went through that very quickly. Okay. Uh, any questions of the applicant? Madam Chair, I, I do have a question, Ms. Reeves. Um, one of the comments by the opposition uh, had to do with open space. And I notice you've got a big area of detention, reserved for detention. How do you plan to deal with that part of the site? John, how are you going to deal with the detention? Are you, is that going to be more of an amenity of detention? Yeah. That would be more of an amenity for detention. Well, I guess, is it going to be like a lawn where people can use it and recreate on it, or is it going to be like a detention basin that's like a drainage type structure? Or has that been thought through yet? Or It's gonna be a wet pond with a fountain and a walking trails around it and okay. benches. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions of the applicant right now? Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Ms. Reeves. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Uh, board members, do you have any questions of the opposition at this point? Any questions? No questions? And the porters are here, and so is Mr. Colini, if you have any questions for them. Okay. Did anybody else on the applicant side have something to say? Okay. All right, because we're going to close the public portion of this meeting. OPD staff, did you have something else to say? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, we're going to close the portion, the public portion of this meeting at this time. Okay, no questions. Okay, we are closing it. Dr. Pritchard. Move approval of agenda item number one, case number MJR 21-24, also PD 07-342CO. Do I hear a second? I have a second. Okay, we are ready for discussion. I, I have something to say. Yes, um, ma'am. Actually, two things. Um, last month's meeting, I know Brown Gill is not here today, but he had he was the one who really requested the one month um, stay so that the neighborhoods surrounding it and the applicant could get together and work out so that there would be more community buy-in and and um, to get everyone more or less on the same page and that does not seem to have happened right so I just wanted to um, to bring that up and now I've been on the board for several years and I think this is the first time I've seen a letter from the schools and that always amazed me that we would be approving, you know, multiple houses, apartments, and the schools never weighed in, never. And this is the first time that I've seen a letter from the schools with concern for the density and the impact. So um, I take that um, very seriously. Yeah. So I'm not going to support this application for those reasons. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none. Madam Chair, I just wanted to make a comment. I uh, I wasn't here last month, so I just just disclaimer. Um, but I do, and I, I can't see the transition. But all I'm seeing here is a plan that has changed from reverse frontage lots to uh, public thoroughfare facing lots, which, in my view, makes for a much better case with what really works as like an alley type um, entry into the the units, which I, I think is a a good solution, and I, I've got to say, I think the the cottage design is well done. Um, those are those are nice looking elevations. 
Now, I understand the concern about the density from the neighbors, but th this is within the the allowance of the plan uh, the, the plan development. Um, so I, I, I understand Ms. McConnell's comments. I certainly do, but I, I'm going to support it for those for those reasons. Okay. We have any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I, uh, looking at the development, I know they've spent a lot of time in developing this project and put a lot into it, and they say they are limited on how many lots they can have in there. But I still have a problem. I know, I know Brother Scott said the density is within the allowment part. But the compatibility, I have a problem with that, uh, with the community. When I look at the surrounding houses and the square footage they have, I just have a problem with uh, putting this kind of density in that area. So I, I won't, won't support it. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, I assume we're ready to vote, and we probably need to do an individual vote. Mr. Whitehead? Ms. O'Connell? No. Dr. Pritchard? No. Mr. Tolls? No. Ms. Wilbanks? Yes. Mr. Fleming? Yes. Vice Chair Lyles Wallace? Yes. And Chair Sharp? No. We have three ayes, four nays. Motion fails. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Pritchard, we're ready for our next case. Agenda item number three, SUP 2021-21, 1925 Union Avenue. The request is a mixed-use development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant present? Is the applicant present? Okay, since this, we don't have any opposition, right? Correct. No opposition. Oh, okay. I think another supporter is down there. Okay, no opposition. Hearing none, then we're not going to hear the case from the OPD. We're just going to go on to the applicant and the applicant supporters. So applicant, if you would come up Give us your name and address, and then we'll hear you and your supporters. Uh, Cameron, Cameron Taylor, uh, with my group here uh, scattered around, part of my development team that I'll, I'll be speaking for the team. Okay, you're the applicant? And my, ad, and my address is 18. Oh, you're the applicant. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. My name is Tim Michael with Design Shop Architects. Uh, 431 South Main Street, Suite 202. I am the applicant. Okay. Do you have anything you want to say at this point? Um, I know someone else is speaking. Yeah, but we, we have several people in support. Um, as the applicant, obviously, I'm in support of this project. There are two uh, two points I'd like to make regarding the application. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one is the... Um, and Luke has not discussed this earlier this week. Our site plan shows the buildings pushed right up to the sidewalk along Union. This was a compromise in some discussions we had both with the neighborhood and DPD. And so Lucas has requested we move those buildings back to the allowable 20-foot setback, and we've agreed to do that. So that's condition one. Um, um, and then additionally, the second item is uh, within the conditions of DPD staff, they recommended no drive-through restaurants be allowed on this site. And yes, if you would, one second. And, and we would ask that that condition be struck Madam, from the application. I, I, this seems to be a little more complicated. Why don't we go to staff and do a presentation? Okay. And then, then you'll know what conditions they're asking relief from. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> staff, we're ready for you. Sure. Mr. Skinner. Good morning, Lucas Skinner with the Division of Planning and Development. Um, and like Josh said, I'll, I'll kind of explain everything that they were just mentioning. We discussed um, some of their concerns, so I'll go through all of that. Um, again, this is SUP 2021-21. Um, it's known as Union Station. It's a mixed-use development located at the old um, police precinct at 1925 Union Avenue. Um, oh gosh, I just realized we're not in full. There we go. Okay, here we have an aerial 
uh, showing the whole site is being encompassed. It fronts along Union Avenue uh, there towards the south of the screen, Linden towards the far north, and Barksdale to your right. Here's a zoning map. Um, it does have two uh, different zones, so it's commercial mixed use three for the portion that fronts Union, and then commercial mixed use one with historic overlay uh, to the south along Linden, um, as well as parts along Barksdale. Um, and then it's also part of the Midtown overlay. Here are some site photos uh, just from Union, uh, looking back to the west, and then um, the photo on the left here is from Barksdale, and then the photo on the right is from Linden. So uh, this is the site plan. Um, it has been reworked um, from the first uh, time that we'd met. Um, not here specifically at the meeting, but we have worked it um, internally within the office. Um, so just a little bit of a site plan review. Um, the uses do meet the UDC. Um, this particular SUP does just pertain to the hotel, but overall the uses do meet the UDC as well. Um, height and parking do meet as well as access with two curb cuts along Union, um, one along Barksdale, and then a private access really for emergency only along Linden. Now, one of the things that the applicant had already mentioned, um, the site plan at the very top towards Union Avenue does show a 20-foot front setback, which is correct for the CMU 3 district. Um, their buildings currently on the site plan go right up to their property line, which is not allowed per the UDC. So staff is going to add a condition uh, that I will talk about later, but basically just to have a new site plan submitted just to ensure that the buildings do meet that front setback. The last note um, we just wanted to mention, there is um, no frontage assignment um, for Union Avenue that is part of the Midtown overlay. However, in the future, as the Bus Rapid Transit and Innovation Corridor come online, there will be an assigned urban frontage that is part of the Midtown overlay for other sections. Um, currently, this site plan shows about 40% frontage along Union Avenue. When assigned an urban frontage, the regulation is to have 70% frontage. So we just wanted to make that note, and I will explain a little bit more graphically here in just a few minutes about that. Here are some renderings. Now, these do not meet the site plan that you just saw specifically, uh, but just to sort of give an idea of the placement of the building's size, um, as well as what they might look like um, from a design standpoint. Uh, here are some wings for that. So you can see the hotel is about five stories, the retail is one, um, and then there will be some condos um, there in the back. So basically, in conclusion, um, this is, again, a special use permit primarily for the hotel component of this mixed-use development that does front along Union. It's set to have um, anywhere from 100 to 120 rooms. Um, the uses, again, range in height uh, from one to five stories, from retail to the hotel being the tallest. They do all meet the Midtown overlay, as well as the CMU three districts. Um, the townhouse portion will have to go before landmarks um, once this approval is all finished. Um, so that will get ironed out as well. Um, staff does feel with the adoption of urban frontages in the future along Union that there could be more frontage addressed there. Um, as with some recent developments with Kroger, Renaissance Bank, et cetera. However, the site plan does meet the regulations of the UDC and um, is applicable to all of the regulations. Um, and staff feels that um, it, it is not going to be injurious to the surrounding neighborhood. Um, so these are my recommendations, staff's recommendations, approval with conditions. Um, again, condition number eight would just be adding that the applicant submit a revised final site plan for administrative review, again, just to address the front setback issue. Um, and I know the applicant, um, I'll just go ahead and say, they wanted to address the drive through restaurant condition. Um, that is condition number four currently. Um, I just put a quick slide together. Staff just felt that with the amount of drive through restaurants already in that one section of Union between, this is actually just Barksdale to Cooper uh, from west to east, with there already being about six uh, drive through restaurants, staff didn't feel with the added traffic that that would be possibly a great idea um, right there. Um, however, the applicant is, of course, welcome to contest that. 
Um, then again, with the urban frontage, this is sort of a, a graphic provided by uh, Mr. Brett Ragsdale, help with this. Um, this is showing, um, as you can see, the site plan on the sort of the bottom. This is showing a sort of a 3D rendering of what the buildings will look like. So currently, the proposal is for 40% frontage. Now, what ideally staff was potentially looking for was something more like this. Um, so the image on the left is showing sort of a site plan view of, of what this would look like. Um, Mr. Ragsdale was showing that if they were to add uh, some frontage only to the retail um, without changing the site plan very much at all, they would have about 56% frontage. And then if you were to add any more frontage also to the hotel site, which is the building on the left in the image um, on the left, which is now the bottom image on the right, they would have 70% uh, frontage with the current site plan. Uh, so that's the end of my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Board members, do you have any questions of Mr. Skinner at this point? Any questions? Okay, we're ready for the applicant. And I believe you didn't give your name and address when you were up there. Okay. Yes, yes it's uh, Cameron Taylor, and I'm at 1844 Peabody Avenue. So I live actually immediately adjacent to it. I go down Barksdale every day. Um, we have had a number of meetings with Central Gardens and had a some spirited conversations and 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 came to a, a, a mutual agreement and I think for the most part they are generally in support of the project. I think you have some letters and emails uh, to that effect. Uh, there are some things still to work through in terms of traffic. Uh, like we would like to see it be one way from Barksdale from the exit that's currently on Barksdale to Union as opposed to both ways and that's more of a city engineering type thing I think that we have to work through, but but for the most part, we're in agreement with Central Gardens. I do want to clarify, of course, it notes in the conclusions, uh, what we're asking for is a special use permit for the hotel only. Uh, we actually already have zoning. We can, in theory, do, I guess, whatever on the front portion and do townhouses, which is what we were proposing as well on the back, which is both are by right. Uh, we are applying just for the SU, the special use permit on the hotel. Uh, obviously, that's something we think is needed and would like to build in the area uh, if we think it's going to serve the area well. And then I did uh, want to also touch base on the drive-through that Lucas referenced. Uh, we're not looking for a drive-through, per se, in the traditional sense, but the world has changed since COVID happened, and so people aren't going in as much. And uh, I don't know what's going to be there. We're talking to a, a number of different kinds of businesses. Could be retail, could be a bank, could be a restaurant. Um, we just don't know yet. Uh, there's lots of interest, as you can imagine. It's a nice location for a lot of different kinds of business. Uh, if I had, say, say Panera Bread, and it's not Panera Bread, so I want to be clear because they're right down the street, but if Panera Bread wanted to go on that location, I'm not, I don't want to limit ourselves uh, and say we can't have you because you can't have a pickup drive through type place. Um, again, uh, and we could, we have the zoning as it is if we wanted to, I guess to technically put two right there without the, and abandon the hotel together. That's not our intent. We want to do a nice development for Central Gardens. I live right there, literally. Uh, we're going to build some nice townhouses, and we think there's a need for that in Central Gardens. And I think it's going to be a nice development, and I think generally we have the support of the staff, although I guess in the one minor issue we disagree with. Uh, but we would like that condition either removed or, or not accepted by Land Use Control Board. And that's all I forgot to say. Hey, thank you. Thanks very much. We'll now hear from the supporter, Edward uh, Gordon Alexander. Good morning. I'd like to say it's good to be back in front of human beings again. I guess Zoom is okay, but this is much better. Uh, I represent a lot of people in the neighborhood, including the principal of Idlewild School, who supports this project with the conditions. But I'd like to commend Mr. Taylor and his group for coming to us ahead of time and discussing the concerns we had. Uh, we had two different meetings, one at the site and one at Memphis Heritage. and. Uh, Mr. Taylor uh, agreed to about probably 95% of the things that we wanted. We've got enough traffic in this neighborhood to last for a lifetime. Uh, 
there's Walgreens on the corner, Chick-fil-A across the street uh, from where I live on South Rembert. And uh, all the traffic coming off Union, anybody who lives in a neighborhood in Midtown knows the traffic concerns and the problems you have if you back up to Union Avenue. Uh, the school traffic from Idlewild at the two drop-off and pickup times extend from the school down Linden, down South Rembert, and onto Union Avenue, and sometimes back all the way up to Walgreens. And that's just part of it. So anyway, uh, the conditions that we wanted, uh, we didn't get Barksdale exit closed, but we're trying to work with Mr. Taylor to support uh, making that a one-way with a curb cut going north so the traffic does not come back in the neighborhood. Uh, they reduced the number of condos from 32 to 20. The last I heard, it was 20. And that's good for us because that means less vehicles in the neighborhood. They also closed Linden Avenue, which would have been a terrible idea to have traffic spill out on Union. Uh, and that's going to be emergency only. So uh, with that said, I can say that most of the people in the neighborhood, although a lot of them cannot come today, Idlewild School, we support this project. And we're waiting on the designs for the condos, which I was hoping we'd have today. But the first design for the condos were not uh, compatible with the neighborhood. They were square boxes with windows. Excuse me, Cameron. But, and now uh, it looks like he's going to do something uh, that's more uh, palatable to uh, the neighborhood and fitting in with the Midtown overlay. And so we're looking on that, but we'll be supporting this at Landmarks and also at City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Okay, before I get with the issue of number four, do we have any questions of the applicant or supporters? Okay. I have a question for the applicant. Um, it, uh, this looks like a wonderful plan. I, I don't understand why, um, I kind of understand the opposition to the condition of not having drive-through, but to have a drive-through on this um, with your plan, with the hotel, with the townhouses, to me, um, would be chaotic to have um, drive-through going through there. And it would, I think, have a negative impact on the hotel and the townhomes. So I think it's a good condition. I mean, I understand, um, you know, the pandemic and the need for drive-through, but I, I, I like that condition. And, and I, I certainly understand that sentiment. Um, and I don't know who the, we don't, we just simply don't know who is going to be there. If, as I said, we're talking to retailers, we've talked to banks, we have talked to some restaurants. There is a lot of interest, as you might imagine, because it's, it's, a, it's a good location. Um, you know, I am a resident of the neighborhood. Literally, I yeah, in, enter and exit off of Barksdale every single day, so I am intimately familiar. I'm not an East Memphis guy trying to redevelop Midtown. Um, the reason is, is, is you know, I'm going to go back to the pandemic. I mean, the world has changed dramatically, and there are lots of, of, of Ways that restaurants have had to had to change to, frankly, to ex exist and continue to operate. Um, and in some cases, some of those restaurants have have adapted. You know, it's not I, it's a drive-through, I guess, but it's not necessarily a drive-through in the traditional sense. I, I, I'm again not at liberty to name some of the people, but, but you may or may not know them. Um, and I don't know. You know who it's going to be, as I said before. But um, there are restaurants who didn't have "quote unquote" drive-throughs that now, in the past, now have drive-throughs, and that's part of their new template going forward. And I don't, you know, we can't exclude them from exclude ourselves from from that opportunity uh, to to let those people operate on the, on the property. And, and again, it may not be a restaurant. It could be a bank. It could be a retailer. It, it could be a sit-down restaurant. I mean, we don't, we don't know. As I said, there are a lot of people talking, but I can't, you know, with a good conscience, uh, you know, if not necessarily cut myself off at the knees. That's a bit strong, but, you know, limit myself or limit us from, from the opportunities that we may or may not have for that sort of business. Um, that's, that's kind of the thinking behind it. Thank you. 
Any other questions of the applicants right now? Okay, how do we handle this, uh, Mr. Whitehead, when there is a condition that they would want to take out and you want to leave in? Well, if a member of the body would like to uh, make that amendment, he or she would make that motion, get a second. And if there is opposition, we take it, that question to a separate vote, separate from the main mm -hmm. motion. Okay. So if no one wants to make that uh, suggestion, then we go on and uh, vote on it as is. And then the applicant would make the same request to the council and hope to... Okay, I got you. In a second. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, we will do the motion. Dr. Pritchard? Yes, move approval of agenda item number three, SUP 2021-21. Second. Okay, it has been moved. I do hear a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to say, uh, I'm familiar with the site. We pursue this as well. Y'all have done a great job. Really like the plan, Mr. Michael, Mr. Taylor. Um, appreciate you bringing this, uh, and I'm going to support it. And I'll just get the elephant out in the room and see what happens. We'll, I'll offer uh, a motion to amend the conditions to remove condition number four. That's what you're requesting. We'll we'll see how if that gets a second. See where it goes. That's my motion. Okay, I got your motion. Do we have a second? I'm looking for a second. So since we don't have a second, I assume, arguendo, that that motion fails. Is that correct? Uh, it doesn't even have to fail. It, just, it, it never <laughs> went anywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the original motion. Can you repeat that again, Dr. Pritchard? Yes, it's pretty straightforward. I move approval of agenda item number three, SUP 2021-21. Second. And we already had a second? Okay, I'm sorry, we already had a second on that. Okay, uh, so is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, I assume we're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Dr. Pritchard, we're ready for item number 13. 13. Agenda item number 13, PD 2021-32, Broad Avenue Townhouse Plan Development, located at the southwest corner of Broad Avenue and Hollywood Street. The request is 21 townhouse unit plan development. Staff recommendation is approval with conditions. Thank you, Dr. Pritchard. Uh, since this particular item, we only have support, so we don't need to have a hearing at this, have to hear it at this point. But I would like for the applicant to step up and please give us your name and address and your position. Yes, I'm Kate Haywood, 46 South East Yates Road, and I am the architect on the team for this application. Okay, we're ready for your presentation because we're not going to have one from the staff since we have support. Is that correct? Let's have Mr. Lucas do a quick one just in anticipation of uh, conditions, con contested conditions. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Good morning again. Lucas Skinner with Division of Planning and Development. This is PD 2021-32, a 21-lot townhouse development. Um, it's located at the intersection of Broad Avenue and Hollywood, uh, right by Sam Cooper. Here is an aerial, also as well as a zoning map to sort of show where this is. Um, again, Broad, Hollywood, and Sam Cooper. It's an old piece of land where the highway was supposed to be widened. Um, I'm sure we're all pretty familiar. Uh, land use map, uh, lots of residential uses to the north, um, as well as the new apartment uses to the west and south. Site photos, um, this is the outline plan, conclusion, staff felt it was favorable, and we are recommending approval with conditions. Thank you. That was very quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, any questions of the staff? Mr. Skinner at this time, board members? Okay, hearing none, we're ready for your presentation. Thanks so much. Um, it's great to see everyone this morning. Um, and thank you, Lucas, for kind of running the slides. So uh, he's already briefed us on where we are. We can kind of continue down, Lucas. So bringing into highlight next slide is really kind of what we're focusing on today. We have this amazing amenity of Overton Park to the west where all of the folks who live here and live in the surrounding areas can really take um, into use on the daily basis. Uh, you know, and what we looked to do was to uh, talk to people who knew more about the things on this site than we did. So we focused a lot on early collaboration with this project. The, my clients were um, under contract to purchase the property since kind of fall of last year. So that's really where we started to have all of our conversations. So we um, met with neighborhood captains from, you know, the Lees Woods Historic District to Broad Avenue Merchants Association. We worked with them first to really understand what their pain points were for the site, what their goals were for their, you know, their neighborhood, and then how the strengths of our development team and design team can align with those to create the best product. So neighborhood captains first. We then went and met with the Fire Prevention Bureau. I'll talk you know, a little bit about a uh, kind of a circulation issue that they have right now that we're looking to uh, resolve with our development. We then went back to the neighborhood captain to show them kind of the, kind of the development of the site plan based on all of their comments and feedback. We then had discussions with the bike ped coordinator, so Nick Euler and Jessica Buttermore um, in December to really understand the, the potential issues with the HAMP line uh, and how we can uh, be a great neighbor and really kind of create a better solution because of this development. We've also spoken with artists who have previous experience um, doing proposals for this site. So the southeast corner of our site, we're looking to really make a gateway into the Broad Avenue um, district and so that's a, a really great collaboration that was important to us and then of course we had our required neighborhood meeting um, October of this year so on to the next slide so the this is really the the aspect the pain points that the community had to to really guide our project so really one of the first concerns the major concern on traffic congestion um, on Hollywood where it starts to back up um, at Sam Cooper, and then, you know, cars cannot cross over uh, broad from the west to east. Uh, the second uh, project goal was to really focus on owner-occupied housing. Um, there are a lot of apartments going up in this area, and so it was a real desire of the neighbors to create some owner-occupant instability in that area. And then along with that, the idea of uh, creating uh, diversity with the housing options on this site so that folks of different kind of uh, price brackets uh, would be able to call this area home. That fourth piece on that same slide, you know, the, uh, that is a desire to vin visually benefit with mix of old and new. So, so the visual aspect, right? And that is, I've kind of separated that out from the other three goals because that is a piece that we will be discussing with Land Use Control Board um, as this is in the Lees Woods Historic District. So they will have full uh, review and approval of all of our visuals. So the next slide, thank you, Lucas. Um, so the concern on traffic congestion, our solution is creating a vehicular connector at the west end of the site in order to relieve congestion at the intersection of Hollywood and Sam Cooper, as well as Hollywood and Broad. This is a right in, right out connector, which is a similar uh, site plan approach that the apartments um, just southwest of us are also doing off of Sam Cooper. The um, next slide, the idea on the vehicular um, connector, and these are notes from uh, Manager Hawthorne with the Fire Prevention Bureau. Um, so we did an overview of area. There was a question of having this cut through versus a hammerhead turnaround for fire access. And they would much prefer having the uh, connector from Broad Avenue to Sam Cooper, which is what we are proposing on our site plan. There is in the uh, the current
current layout kind of a, a non-compliant turnaround. So we would be uh, using that property to build upon and then we would create an actual vehicular connector on the west end of the site. So the other um, item within traffic congestion is really understanding the interaction with the HAMP line. At the top uh, picture, you're seeing standing on broad looking east. It's currently, you know, this is where the bikes come onto the street and share the street until they cross over Hollywood um, onto Broad to where then it's a protected cycle track. And so this development would be uh, developing that section of Broad into the protected cycle track, which is the image that you're seeing on the bottom. So that is a little girl riding her bike on Tillman. So you're seeing that it would be physically, uh, you know, separated from cars to the bike lanes. Next slide. The other aspect of this is the vehicular connector. We're really, really through our collaboration with Nick and the um, and his bike ped team. We're thinking about this vehicular connector um, in essence as a uh, kind of elongated speed hump. So the idea is to have kind of the, the connector be more of a raised kind of plaza space so that it's not a quick way for cars to whip in and whip out. It's really creating a better place because of that connector and also solving a, a major traffic congestion um, item. So the second goal, owner-occupied housing with the townhomes, we are uh, really looking to, uh, to bring more people here and to create more stability, uh, kind of moving into the future of this property. Um, and you know, some of the things that, some of the feedback that we heard at our neighborhood meeting was about density. And I wanna call our attention to a few uh, kind of surrounding developments. So this, you're seeing kind of a little site plan on the bottom of this. Uh, this is the apartments directly west. So this is 27 units per acre here. The next slide will show the apartments just south of that, um, which are at 27 units per acre there as well. Next slide will show over on, um, excuse me, Broad Avenue. So the current apartments under development right now at 42 units per acre. And then the density that we are proposing on our site on the next slide is 18 units per acre. Next slide. Uh, the, the other aspect of kind of affordable homes with the unit mix, next slide. We're really looking, next slide, to our kind of context around us to tell us what those homes should be. So looking at the north end of our property, we are facing the 1,200 square foot single family homes across. And so we are proposing 1,200 square foot townhomes directly across from that with a maximum of two stories to be in keeping with those spaces. Then when we look at the east side of the property, this is again letting context um, show our unit sizes. So we're going to a little bit higher um, height up to three stories here with a little bit of a larger townhome to again span kind of the opportunity for folks to, to come and live on this development. Um, I will also, and I don't know if this is appropriate, but um, so Jackson Loeb is here in support of the project. Um, there is, uh, Loeb Properties owns the, the site directly opposite of this one, and I'd love to tag him in for just a moment to give his thoughts since it seems appropriate now. Yeah, we okay? do yeah. We do have a couple of minutes left for Mr. Jackson Loeb. Is Name and address, please. Good morning. Jackson Loeb, 3677 Oakley Avenue. Okay. Um, thanks for allowing me to talk in favor of this development. I'm here representing LPI Memphis and Grub Properties, who neighboring, we own a neighboring property there on Broad Avenue, and we're in support of this development because this team's really done their due diligence on the front end. They engaged the community, let the community voice their concerns and addressed all of those concerns. Not only that, but they're building well below the, the maximum density that is required here, and they've got a great track record, so LPI Memphis and Grub Properties are in favor of this development. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Anything else from the applicant? Yeah, I think okay. that we're really at the end of this. Um, so we are good. To, I'm happy to answer questions um, from, from you all. Okay, thank you. Any questions of the applicant from the board members? Any questions? Okay, hearing none, I think we're ready for the motion. Move approval of agenda item number 13, case number PD 2021-32. Second. Okay. 
I, he I hear a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any discussion from our board members? Okay, hearing none, I assume we're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Madam Chair, show me yes. the stain, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Do we have anything else from Wednesday, November 10th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Next meeting, Wednesday, November 10th. Hearing that and hearing no other questions and no other information, meeting adjourned. <laughs>